concerned with the credibility of U.S. military force that people, you know, will somehow cease to be afraid uh, of the ability of America to use this massive military machine, the largest in the world, bigger than any other country, spending more than almost all the other countries combined. You know, who is afraid that this massive machine of death will so will lose its power over the people of the world and that they may be willing to determine their own destiny because look who they're targeting. I mean, they say, well, we target, uh, you know, in human rights, that's what's important to us. But, you know, in Bahrain, the government there can oppress people for just thinking about protesting. And the U.S. government does absolutely nothing. Well, the U.S. Navy, the fifth fleet, the fleet that's going to carry out this attack on Syria is based in Bahrain. So you roll with the U.S., you can do whatever you want to do. And ultimately, they talk about human rights. Look at Saudi Arabia. Look at all these other countries. They talk about democracy. Most of their allies in the Gulf states have, don't even, the, the word democracy is not even in the lexicon of the politics. So ultimately, what is this really about? It's not about democracy. It's not about human rights. It's not about chemical weapons. Israel instead of using chemical weapons. In the first Gulf War, the U.S. used depleted uranium bullets. It's not about that. If they really cared about weapons of mass destruction, they'd get rid of all the nuclear weapons they have. It's about finding whatever reason they can to do what they want to do. So if it has to be chemical weapons, nuclear weapons, uh, you know, killing too many people, whatever it is, they'll come up with some reason for why they have to go to war and why they have to continue this endless war drive because they don't care about credibility at all. I, I thought it was disgusting to see John Kerry stand up there yesterday and say this is about U.S. credibility. People, you know, we have a president, he said, we have a president who does what he says he's going to do. A president who says he does what he says he's going to do. Well, I guess when it comes to waging endless war, that's true. But when it comes to promising to release innocent people from the Guantanamo Bay torture camp, he doesn't do what he says he's going to do. And when people say, oh, well, you said you were going to do this, and you even have power that allow you to do this, they just come up with excuses. So they just make up whatever's convenient, whatever particular time to protect their ability to go around the world with this massive U.S. military torture spying machine. And don't forget it's a torture and spying machine. Right now, as they do this, they're building this massive apparatus that, without any hint of exaggeration, is attempting to be able to eavesdrop on every single electronic communication in the entire world. In the entire world. So they want a military that can go around the world and destroy and kill anyone who they want. They did the legal justification for that. Now they're creating a spy machine that can spy on everyone so before you can do anything, they can use that military machine against you. They're using these prisoners who they're torturing in Guantanamo Bay to, to put in this regime of indefinite detention so they can throw people in jail on some BS premise that they trump up and leave them there forever without any trial, despite the fact that they've committed no crime and in some cases been cleared by the U.S. government. So when you put all that together, this is a massive machine for the repression of the people of the world because the people, as I said, the rich people, the Wall Street bankers, the corporate heads who are worried about the credibility of this system, they are, they can see what happened in the Arab Spring, they can see what happened with Occupy Wall Street, they can remember the history of people's struggles in this country, they know that their dirty deeds, that the crimes they are committing all around the world can blow back on them in the worst possible ways, and they're using the military and the NSA and the CIA to try to keep and contain the anger and the outrage of the people around the world, and that is what this intervention in Syria is about.